chapter 80, time to face the music, Bazaar returns to the shore with one goal in mind, speaking to magic dabbler Palomar Franco. I need to know what Metalkatuman is and what it means. You take a kind of fine metal that you infuse with magic properties, and then um, you have a magic item that corresponds to that metal specifically, right? So that way, you can attune to an item almost instantaneously. What you could do is put a tattoo using these metals, maybe say around your finger, and then when you put a ring on, you're instantly attuned to that item. And if you take it off, instantly unattuned to that item. Bizarra then asks after Butez, the tattoo artist. I've heard he's been associated with this metallic attunement. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> you done with your questions? I believe I found out what I needed to know. Bazora heads to Nakuzi to ask Butez herself. Meanwhile, the rest of our friends investigate the dismembered remains of the plant man mutant. Safira, feet, where'd the feet go? Oh, right. Check um, for feet. Okay. Tattoo. I can it, I... And as you do, a little image of a tornado kind of whirlwind tattoo there. Safira, fuck's sake, is that, <laughs> is that it? That's it. So then there's another man who also passed away that has a tattoo between his toes. And now the, there's a third one, so we should put this in the Yeah, the there's sack. a third one, and he's a bit strange, this one. Uh, carefully put that in the sack. Erland investigates the memorial for Niels Bogus' parents, where they originally found the Plant Man mutant. This, this thing's name is Annika. What? What? So do you did... How do you know that? Uh, Nanette and Seidel are survived by Niels, mm -hmm. who we've met, and Annika, who's an elven girl in the picture. Not so much survived anymore. The mutant was... Neil's his sister. Erland has a private word with Orba. Erland, what do you value you... more, wealth or power? I don't want to answer this. You have to answer these why? questions. You tell me why? Why? You tell me why before you make me answer these questions. You, because it's my job <laughs> and to I protect you. And I am your boss. I'm going to pull out the piece of paper I stole from Daisy. Mm -mm. Orba's going to reach out and, and try to take it. Away. What is... That. This is what the Gentle Void wants to know about you. Why do you have it? Because I stole it from Bizarra. When? Weeks ago. You're right, I am too trusting. You are. But I don't think you're correct in who I'm too trusting for. You have had that for weeks. I need you to stop talking and do your job. My job is to keep you alive. Then shut up and do it. But Erland apologizes, and although he keeps the page for himself, he shares the questions with Orba. Does she know who her parents are? Who does she trust the most? Which does she value more? Wealth or power? What is she looking for in Auntie Suyu? I am still very angry with you. That's fine. Graven, Erland, Safira, and Orba head to the Ale House, just in time for Bramise Yord's concert to start. Right, so I'm gonna sort of get a seat because it's rather busy. Uh, there's four of us now, as long as we have many different vantage points on me, I think we'll be okay, all right. And what questions are you gonna ask him if you get to talk to him? What questions are you gonna ask the people who kidnapped him? I mean, I wanna know- I want to know, him, I want to know where Marvin Bishop is first. I think all the other questions I have are from Marvin Bishop. And his okay, relationship so the goal to, when they do talk to you is, is to, to get find to out where Marvin Bishop is. And if they tell you that they have him somewhere and they want to take you there, what do we say? I say, I'll see you there later. I'll think about it. They find their positions and the show begins. Two lanterns are uncovered near the staircase that leads up to the second floor quarters behind the Upe Ale House. And the warm light washes over the face of a tiefling woman with scarlet red skin. She sings a ballad of Niajet, god of nature, with a light and charming sound, and she continues to sing the notes. And everybody quietly listens, and she continues to pluck at the harp. And Erland kind of watching down as the performance is taking place, you hear a little as the chair next to you is pulled out and somebody sits down. And with one hand sort of covering the side of their face, they sit at your table and you peer over. And that is where we're going to end. No! <laughs> Will Orba forgive Erland? Can Graven make it through an entire concert about meddling gods? Has Bizarra forgotten how needed she is at the Wamparani Na Poo Pipes? Find out next time on Table Top Notch.